Hey everyone, Brooke Sapelsa, Managing Editor with NBC Out, and I'm here with activist and YouTube star Ingrid Nilsson. Ingrid, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Election season is upon us, and you were involved with a really cool voter education project. Can you tell us about that? Yes, it is called We the Voters, and it is a series of 20 short films, and they are nonpartisan films that speak directly to the topics that millennials care about. So things like health insurance, student debt, what your rights actually are as a voter, and they break down these fundamental parts of our government and our country and make it easy to digest and understand. So what got you interested in this particular project? I was really interested in this because I find that, especially with people my age, I'm 27, I noticed you know, my personal friends, people that I would meet through work, people were really turned off by the word politics, but it ultimately is really caring about your country. And what I love about these films is that they are unbiased and nonpartisan, which allow people to get the information that they need to inform themselves, to be inspired, and then be empowered to go to the voting booths and make the decisions that are gonna be right for them. Tell us about the video that you narrated. The video that I narrated is called So You Think You Can Vote, and it's all about the history of voting rights in the United States, how we got to where we are today, and how it may be more difficult to vote than you think. It actually isn't a constitutional right to vote, and a lot of people think that. It's a misconception. You hear all the time, you know, it's your right to vote, but it's more like a civic duty. What issues have not been talked about on the campaign trail that you think should be talked about more? Foreign policy ties into every single other issue that we care about, and so I would like to see that connection happen a little bit more, because foreign policy essentially is our relationship with other countries, and our relationship with other countries affects our economy and our overall well-being. Well, the election is next month, but mm -hmm. this month is LGBTQ History Month, and earlier this week was National Coming Out Day, and you came out in sort of a big splash on YouTube, and I was watching your um, one year anniversary video. Hi everyone. So here we are one year later. One year ago today, I posted my coming out video and my life changed forever. How has this coming out, how has that changed your life? Oh man, it's, I mean, it's changed it just, I think fundamentally at a core level because it really has been a stepping stone to dig deeper into who I am, what I care about, you know, where I want my life to go, where I want to see the, the direction of the world and how I can contribute to that. In one of your videos, you also said the coming out experience was both amazing and ugly. In what way was it amazing and in what way has it been ugly? Well, I mean, it's amazing because of that awakening that you go through and you are able to, I, I'm, you know, I'm able to live my truth and I feel really great about that and to have so many wonderful people in my life that support me and these intimate relationships that I have formed that really are truly intimate now. On the flip side of that, I think something that isn't talked about that much with coming out is the grappling of letting go of a past life and a past self, sometimes multiple past selves. And that's really hard to come to terms with, letting go of something that's no longer true about yourself or never really was true, and then stepping into who you actually are. It's something that is very complicated and a lot more difficult than it seems, and you don't really know how you're going to navigate it until you find yourself in that position. And once you do, and I think no matter what it is, no, whether it's you know your sexuality that you're dealing with or just evolving as a person, we all hit this point and we're gonna keep hitting it again and again and you have to take it one day at a time. I'm constantly reminded of how many people still are not out. You know, now on sort of the other side of that, what's your advice to people who may be struggling to come out or come out in certain aspects of their life? 
I, what I always tell people first is to examine how, how safe it is for them. You know, emotionally, physically, uh, there definitely are environments where people don't come out because it is physically and emotionally unsafe for them to do so. And so I think that is definitely a priority. And then from there, if you do feel safe, start telling people who you know will support you and start garnering that little support group because this is something that shouldn't be shouldn't have to be done alone um, and the people that love you in your life are going to be there and support you so if you do encounter difficult moments you'll be able to fall back on those people and i really think that cultivating meaningful loving relationships are the things that 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 is the thing that carries us through our lives and my last question to you um, tell us where we can find out more about we the voters you can find the we the voters films at we the voters .com. it's also available on over 60 platforms including DirecTV, mtv itunes so there are a bunch of places where you can watch it and it's really fun I will thank you so much for hanging with NBC Thank Out. you. Take care. You too. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.